Eddie Hearn tweeted this yesterday. Congratulations to Amir King Khan and Sammy Vargas on a great fight. The fight recorded the biggest live UK audience on subscription TV in boxing history. I guess he means in, well, he certainly must mean in the UK, not in other countries. But in the UK, according to Eddie Hearn, Khan versus Vargas recorded the biggest live UK audience on subscription TV history. That's pretty incredible, people. And it's testament to how exciting Amir Khan is and how entertaining he is, both in and out of the ring. <laughs> Let's be real. You see, in the UK, there are a lot of people who talk bad about Amir Khan. There are a lot of people who wish bad things for him. He has a lot of haters. Which I find a little sinister. A lot of the people who really hate on Amir Khan, I find it sinister. And I think they have very dubious motives for hating the guy. And other people are just miserable in general. You know, people who are just miserable, who can never see the funny side of life. They hear Khan come out with outrageous claims and statements, which he does do. They hear him come out with delusional things, which he definitely does do as well. But they can't see the funny side of it. They can't see the funny side of life. I, I just, I don't understand people like that. Of course, Khan has said things that are outrageous and ridiculous. But that's what makes him entertaining, to me anyway. Khan's whole thing, the Amir Khan show is one of the most entertaining things I've seen in, in British boxing history. And I've been around long enough to see a lot of showmen and a lot of entertaining fighters over the years in British boxing, but very few of them are as entertaining as Amir Khan, in and out of the ring. Khan's career and his life in the public eye has been a roller coaster ride of non-stop entertainment. <laughs> That's what he's provided me. Frills and spills. Knockout losses, comebacks. Fights that he's supposed to win comfortably but ends up getting dropped or seriously hurt. Like the Vargas fight. Like the fight against Julio Diaz. I can't... Comp this is why, at the end of the day, whether you love or hate Amir Khan, this is why his fight against Vargas has recorded the biggest live UK audience on subscription TV. I forgot to mention the U See what I did there? Look at me overlooking the fact that it said UK audience. <laughs> Forgive me, people. I woke up not long ago. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Khan is entertainment personified. That's what he is. He is a very gifted, offensive fighter. When he lets his hands go, steps round to the side as he was against Vargas, he can look very impressive. But he is so vulnerable. He's so chinny. And I've seen people still try and claim that Amir Khan is not chinny. No, he is chinny. They say, no, 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 he's not really chinny. It's just he's got a bad defense. No, it's both. He's chinny and he's got a bad defense. <laughs> you trying to tell me that that right hand from Sammy Vargas would have dropped Errol Spence or would have dropped Kel Brook, or would have dropped Keith Furman, or Sean Porter, or any of those guys. I'm telling you, it wouldn't have. But it dropped Amir Khan, and it dropped him heavy. He said it was a flash knockdown. That was no flash knockdown. That was a heavy knockdown. Yeah, he got up quick, and the bell came just at the right time, so you wouldn't see exactly how hurt Amir Khan was. But he was hurt. I'm not saying he was totally out of it, but he was hurt. Remember when he got dropped by Danny Garcia? I remember him getting up fairly quickly from that too. Remember when he got dropped by Julio Diaz? He got up quickly that time too, but he was hurt. Khan was definitely hurt by Julio Diaz when he went down. He went down hard. Khan's chin is terrible. And his defense ain't much better. But the fact that he's so fast and explosive, particularly in the early rounds, makes him compelling viewing when you combine it with his vulnerability. <laughs> he's a guy who's been knocked out numerous times, who's been down, 
Count how many times has Amir Khan been down? I've lost count. It must be at least ten. What is it? Ten, twelve times in his career he's been down. I can think of the opponents who have dropped him, but in some of these fights he's been down more than once. Obviously, Michael Gomez dropped him. Willie Lemon dropped him. Bradis Prescott dropped him. Danny Garcia dropped him. Julio Diaz dropped him. Canelo Alvarez dropped him. Vargas dropped him. Obviously, that's seven. And remember, he, he was down more than once in some of those fights. There might be somebody else who I'm forgetting at the moment. But he's been down a hell of a load of times. And for a guy who's been down so many times, who's been knocked out cold before, like against Canelo, you would think that he would develop a natural cautiousness. But no, Khan is still in the pocket, trading shots, <laughs> leaving himself exposed, letting his hands go when his opponent's swinging. <laughs> He's so focused on knocking people out himself, on looking spectacular himself, that the fact that he's got a glass jaw just seems to pass him by. <laughs> Incredible stuff. What I will say is this, because I have been critical. I certainly was in my last video about Joe Goosen as his trainer. Not to say Joe Goosen is a bad trainer necessarily, but I'm not sure he's the right trainer for Amir Khan when he's telling Khan to let his hands go more and be more aggressive and what have you when Khan has been dropped in a fight and Khan has got a history of being chinny, I just feel like that was really bad advice. Uh, but one thing I will say is that he has developed some new moves under Joe Goosen. As I mentioned a few moments ago, when he was letting sh his shots off, the combinations off against Samuel Vargas, he was stepping off to the side to get an angle and then throwing hooks. That kind of reminds me of Mike Tyson. He wasn't doing it quite as dramatically as Tyson used to do it, but it was Tyson-esque, the way he would, you know, step off to the side and then throw these hooks, particularly the left hook, to get a better angle and kind of uh, uh, catch your opponent off guard. And also, you step out of their field of vision and you throw the hook from an angle they're not expecting it from. Khan was doing that a lot against Vargas, and I think the first knockdown was started off by that move. Or might have been the second knockdown. I think it was the first knockdown. So that is the development I've seen under Joe Goose. And his style has changed. I've noticed differences in Khan, particularly in this fight, since he's been with Goosen. The stuff that he was doing under Virgil Hunter is noticeably dissipated. Okay, I know Joe, Virgil Hunter's style. I know the stance that he would fight out of when he was under Virgil Hunter. He was looking very Andre Ward-esque in terms of his stance, the way he was positioning his feet and his hands. Whereas here, he is looking a little bit more like a Rafael or Gabriel Ruelas in terms of his stance and all that kind of business and, and what he's trying to do in the ring. He is becoming a little, bo a little bit more like a Joe Goosen fighter. And that's testament really to Amir Khan's athletic ability the fact he's able to switch up his style to some extent relatively quickly but you know as i said in the previous video i think the joe goosen style is going to get him in more trouble <laughs> than he normally gets in i think the virgil hunter style is the best style for amir khan i'm not saying he's going to beat everybody with a virgil hunter style i'm not saying he's even necessarily going to regain a world title or capture a world title at 147. I'm not necessarily saying that. All I'm saying is, however far Amir Khan's ability can take him, it's only going to take him that far with Virgil Hunter, in my view. Because Hunter's style is the best style at protecting his fragility. And it's also the best style at preventing mistakes because Khan is an impulsive character, both in and out of the ring. You, this is why he's so entertaining, because he's impulsive. You know, and, and I know I'm laughing at Amir Khan more often than with him, but don't mistake that for lack of respect. The way that Amir Khan has been able to rebound from numerous defeats, humiliating defeats, 
ridicule in the press, ridicule from the public, the way he's been able to rebound from that multiple times and hold his head high and persevere is quite incredible. There's so much that I admire about Amir Khan. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I don't admire. There's a lot of stuff I scratch my head and shake my head out and think, what the hell are you doing? But there's also a lot that I do admire about the guy. His perseverance, his persistence, his self-belief. I admire a lot about Khan because most people, most of us right now, most of you guys listening to this video, you would not be able to come back from all the stuff Amir Khan's been through. Let's be real about it. Don't start being keyboard warriors and all this kind of nonsense. Khan is mentally tougher than most people listening to this video. They wouldn't be able to come back from the setbacks that he's come back from. So show him some respect in that regard at least. Even if you don't like the way he behaves and some of the things he says, the fact he's been able to come back from adversity as much as he has, you have to respect that. Yeah, he's always shown bravery in the ring. Oh yeah, we know we don't want to fight Kell Brook. <laughs> we know about that. But the bravery that he's shown in the ring, come on. You have to respect that. His recklessness, I know you scratch your head at it, but the guy's got a lot of heart, Amir Khan. Always had a lot of heart. Went in there with Canelo, went in there with Marcus Maidana. And he showed heart in them fights. He didn't fight like he was scared to death. He showed heart. Well, give him respect for that, at least. <laughs> you know, regardless what you think about the man, give him some respect. So yeah, I might laugh at Khan more than with him most of the time. Although I do laugh with him too. Don't get it twisted. When he's trolling Kel Brook, I can't help but find it funny. <laughs> because the stuff Khan does is so absurd. The stuff he says about Brook is so absurd. That all I can look at it as, the only way I can look at it is that he's trolling. <laughs> and that's when I'm laughing with him. But a lot of the time, yeah, I'm laughing at him. He provides me entertainment at the end, at the end of the day. And I, and I will be a little sad when Amir Khan's career is finished. And some people are going to say, yeah, his career is finished now, Hatman. What are you talking about? His career is done. He's over. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. But he's provided me with frills and spills. And clearly, he's provided a lot of other people with entertainment too. Or else, why would he have recorded the biggest live UK audience on subscription TV in boxing history. Why would he have done that if he wasn't an entertaining fighter? Yeah, we know that he's got a lot of people from the Asian community in the UK who support him just by virtue of the fact that he's Asian. But that is not the totality of his fan base and, and not even just his fan base, the people who watch him. Because a lot of people who tune in to watch Amir Khan, they want to watch him because they want to see him lose. They want to see him get knocked out. Or, they, or at the very least, they want to see if he gets knocked out. Because they know in Amir Khan fights, you can expect the unexpected. <laughs> so, you know, I want to I be real about it. Give Khan the respect he deserves. Uh, very entertaining fighter. Giving me so many frills and spills, spills over the years. In and out of the ring. I mean, out of the ring. Look, his life in the public eye... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's like it's like in it's like sorry his life in the public eye is like his life in the ring too you know it's frills and spills controversy bizarre decisions impulsive behavior amazing stuff so yeah hats off to the king khan i suspect that the end of his career is not too far away but as I've said before, the, the glass is half full mentality, which has got Amir Khan the success that he's had in his career, has also led to a lot of his defeats. And ultimately, it might be his biggest enemy when it comes to knowing when to retire. Khan, earlier on in his career, said that he would retire by the age of, I think he said, 28. He's now, what, 31? Or well, something like that, Amir Khan. So like so many fighters, he hasn't retired by the age that he said he was going to. Uh, and given the fact that Amir Khan has taken so much punishment in his career, 
I wouldn't want to see him go on too long. You, you know, I'm kind of conflicted because I like the roller coaster ride of his career. I like the frills and spills and the ups and downs. It's entertaining. But at the same time, just as, as a human being, I don't want to see a guy get damaged permanently. So I hope Amir Khan's family can have some influence on him over the co next couple of years and get him to retire when the time is right. And the time might be right sooner rather than later. We'll see. Um, obviously, I want to see the Kell Brook fight. I think that would be wildly entertaining. Not only the fight itself, the build up to the fight would be wildly entertaining. <laughs> Just thinking about it makes me laugh. The Pacquiao fight, yeah, that's a cool fight, I guess. The ex uh, sparring buddies and training buddies fighting each other, but it's the Brook fight I really want to see. Let's be real. You know, as much as I find it entertaining, controlling Brook and not fighting him, <laughs> I want to see them fight even more then I enjoy the trolling. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Amir Khan. Are you surprised by this? That he's drawn such a big audience that he's broken records. And that's just against Sammy Vargas. <laughs> this is a good ind indication that Khan against Kell Brook is still a huge fight. It's still a stadium fight in the UK. Oh yeah, it is. If he's doing this, these kind of numbers against Vargas... Obviously, this was not pay-per-view, but still, there are plenty of other guys who have not fought on pay-per-view, big-name fighters, and they haven't got these kind of numbers. So for Khan to have done that, that's a big deal, you know? And I joked recently on Facebook in my boxing group, I said, in fact, was I really joking? <laughs> Let me pull myself up a second there. Maybe I wasn't joking, but I said that we need to see an Amir Khan, David Price double header at some point. <laughs> we need to see Khan and Price in a double header, both against very dangerous punching, but technically limited opponents. <laughs> I'd pay pay-per-view for that. Jesus, yes. <laughs> All right. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about everything I've talked about in this video. All right. It's happening. I'm out.